Here's a pre-op and a 17-day post-op. Some recession. There is recession, but it's healthy. And they get to keep an incisor. Incisors are tough. You lose one, you gotta lose the other three. <laughs> so that implant bridge comes in. That's pretty good, pre-op, post-op. I like the bone around that. Here's my case. I found one. The only regret I have, I got to the only regret I have, and yeah, I'll, I'll stop soon. The only regret I have is that I didn't take a clinical picture because my, my hygienists are in the back, but they'll, they'll tell you, they'll swear to it. I, they'll swear to it, I promise. This woman came in, she, she um, was going to Europe and she had uh, been treated in New Jersey by a, a periodontist and moved down here and she was going back to France, I think, and she came in with a huge facial perioabscess on number five. And it's an area that had been treated in New Jersey. I happen to have known the periodontist. He's a, an excellent periodontist. And she came in with a, a really major abscess. And I told her that, you know, I wanted to treat her with a laser. And she said, well, you know, will it work? And I said, well, you know, I don't know, but you're getting ready to go to Europe, and I think it's better than you know, than, than me doing conventional surgery. So I don't have the clinical, so I'm just telling you what it was. But here, here's, here's the deal. Um, that's the before. But so, so look at this right here and this right here. And, and that's the after. And you can see the bone formation right here. And this is more dense. There, I'll go back and show you so you can see it. You see the density on the mesial is a little less dense. And then now it's a little more dense. I thought that was pretty good. Clinically, it's unbelievable. There's no recession. This one was probing, what, what 10, 12? I don't know. I think I lost my probe in her. I think she still has the probe in her. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it looks fantastic, and it doesn't probe. And it looks to me like she's getting some regeneration. That's, you know, that made me feel great, because now I'm feeling that, you know, this is really doing for me what I want it to do, you know, and it's actually, maybe I can give my slides to someone else now. So the laser can be used to treat any stage of adult periodontal disease. It can be used to treat gingivitis or advanced perio type 1 to type 4. It doesn't matter. Why patent a laser perio protocol? It standardizes things. It calibrates things. It makes it possible to do research. Everyone is on the same page. It makes the results believable. If everyone is using the same technique, then everything that is done can be proven. If people are just experimenting, then nothing means anything. It could, I don't care if it comes from LSU, or it comes from Florida, or it comes from UCLA. If everyone's just taking a machine and zapping gingiva, that doesn't mean anything. This is defined. You can't I can't, I, I couldn't get this laser in my office until I spent three days at the University of Colorado Department of Periodontology with this fellow who did the study, Dr. Yuckna. They won't sell you the machine until you take the course. And I've been practicing for 25 years. I think I know a little bit about periodontal disease, but they won't sell you the machine. It doesn't matter if you write a check or not, you can't have it. That's a big deal. It's safer, you know, it's safer for patients if the people that have this stuff know what they're doing. You know, if you buy a piece of equipment, which we do, we dentists do, and you just start using it, you hope you get the result that you expect. But there's no guarantees. 
and you can't return it. But with this, the integrity of the company is so high and the belief in the product is so high that you actually have to learn about it first before you can get one. That's huge. That's a big deal. And it keeps people, probably keeps some people away from it because some people want to venture out. Some people, you know, there's some people in the world that they have a better idea about everything. Well, you know, in dentistry, that doesn't always work so well. So the founders of this company want to make sure those type of people didn't get a hold of this machine. Number five is kind of interesting. It discourages just salesmen from being salesmen. Because it's pretty easy to fall in love with this kind of thing. I mean, it's really neat. I got to tell you, it's really neat. Um, but not everyone can get one unless they take the course. So it's, a, it's patented. It can only be performed with the patent license. And it removes fear. So now you have something that you can talk about. When you have the downhill patient that you tried everything with, they had, you know, I've had, I had people in the last couple of weeks for some reason, they had, they had surgery 20 years ago, 15 years ago, what have you. Um, they're not doing it again. They won't do it again. Very rarely will they. Forget the reasons, could be smoking, could be anything. But people won't do it again. But now, they may consider it. They may consider it. And I got to tell you, when the presentation of this technique happens in my place, the acceptance is extremely high. And afterwards, they feel really good. And there's nothing better for me as a periodontist to have people coming back to me that are really happy. I mean, they're really happy. Um, before, they were still fairly happy, but they knew that it would be sort of an uphill climb. So it's really something that has changed practice landscape. And it just, it just makes everything so much easier to deal with because people are not having the repercussions and the side effects of conventional treatment. So it's not just the, that kind of patient, but it's also the new patient, the patient that you've been trying to push along, but for whatever reason, you know they need to have treatment, but you just can't get them out of the office because they're afraid. So again, now you have something else to try to get them to do the right thing. And the right thing is not just to keep their teeth, but maybe reduce inflammation. You know, maybe make them healthier. Now you have a way to do that. This is a way to do that. So, um, you remember this guy? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I was going to say, if you, if you had questions, you put them up in an envelope, I'll hold up to my head, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you the answer before you ask me the question. Um, maybe I've given you some answers. Maybe I've answered some of the questions, so maybe in effect I did that. Uh, maybe I gave you a few answers um, of some questions that you had, but just in case I did not, please. Yes? Um, you said that they can come in in one appointment. How many teeth would you do in one appointment? Well, if we do have a patient that uh, would have been one of those that you were talking about that 20 years ago had surgery and says, I am not having gum surgery again. I will have false teeth before I have gum surgery yeah. again. And they would probably need it on every single tooth. Would you do it in one appointment or you would? What we typically do, we will do one tooth because I, I have a case where I did, well, this abscess, I, this, this radiograph I showed, that was one tooth, just the one tooth. I've done, you know, the, the buckle forcation of number 18, or I'll do the whole mouth, medically able, necessary, yes. So it, it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, if the patient has a full complement of teeth, in my office, the way we're set up, we either do it in halves, but they come in the same week. Now, you can't do that easily with conventional surgery. With this, you can. Or I'll do the whole mouth. Usually, if you give patients a choice, halves or the whole thing, they're doing it all. They spend the morning with me. And let me make this point. It's not faster. 
I still take a long time to do this. I mean, it's, it's, it's still delicate. It's still surgery. It's just different surgery. It's surgery with a different instrument. So it's not like you come in and you know, get their whole mouth done in an hour. That doesn't happen. This is very painstaking. It's very detailed. It goes, again, by the protocol. And that takes a long time. So, but, but the answer to your question is, we can do whatever the requirement is, whether it's a single tooth or whether it's the entire mouth. It doesn't matter to me. Yes? Are you also using the traditional packing after the Only in smokers. Only. What was the question? Are we using dressing, perio dressing? Okay. Only in smokers. And only then on the palatal side. I don't even use it on the buckle. Okay. okay? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Here's how it works. You can't probe these people for six months. Now, they're healing. They're healing. You can pumice them. You know, you can do anything super gingival. They can't floss for six weeks. They can't brush for three weeks. Well, don't say, here, let me, let me, it's, it's not really a wow because if you do conventional flap surgery, they're not brushing then either. <laughs> okay? So you're right, it does, you have, to, you have to sort of process that. So those are the rules. The healing time, here's what happens. The patient comes in, they have Lanap. In three months, they're seeing um, a hygienist in my office. At six months, they're seeing a hygienist in my office. Then they're seeing the referring office at nine months. Then we, we start the alternating supported periodontal therapy. But for the first six months, I have to make sure that I have to work on the occlusion. I have to work on the plaque control. I don't want any probing done. I want to govern how they're taking care of themselves so they can get the best results. And that's just part of the protocol. So I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Did I answer it? Yes. Good. I know, I'm sure every person in here who have, have patients that are interested in this, the one thing they want to know is what is the range of fee? And I know, are you buying a Volkswagen, are you buying a Mercedes? But as a referring dentist, it